I had been taking notes using several notebooks throughout my whole high school career. Each subject had its own separate notebook, where I would simply jot down all of my class notes and homework exercises. That was the way everyone in my class did things. No one has ever considered taking notes in any other way. It might have been because of the strict old school educational system I come from, where anything that can connect to the internet or has a screen is viewed as a distraction. I, however, entered a whole new world when beginning my studies at university. I saw that there was so much potential in using technology as a new way of learning. So I began using an iPad to take all of my notes from first year on. I was surprised to see how efficient everything became, but as like everything in the world, there are both advantages and disadvantages to using both an iPad or simply pen and paper. My name is Joanna and I am a second year mathematics student at the University of Oxford. In this video, I want to talk you through all of the pros and cons of taking notes on an iPad and on paper, as I have been in both situations quite recently, so you can make an informed choice on which note-taking style you prefer. I will also briefly touch on what my plans for this year and the upcoming terms are, whether I'll stick with digital note-taking or I'll switch back to paper. So without further ado, let's get right on with the video. The first criteria that I feel we should touch on is the writing experience. Of course, writing on paper feels way more natural than writing on glass, which takes a lot getting used to. I believe this is the biggest advantage taking notes on paper has towards digital note-taking. Each different pen, highlighter, pencil has its own texture, each feels different. It becomes a very personalized experience where you have complete choice over your favorite stationary items. And I guess that there is also the fact that you have been writing on paper since you were in kindergarten. The iPad, however, has a very, very slippery writing surface, so it will most definitely feel a bit unnatural at first. You get used to it over time. After a few weeks of using my iPad for practice problems during the summer before my first year, I had no issues writing on it when the actual classes started. You can always improve your writing experience though by just adding a paper-like screen protector or something that's similar to a paper-like screen protector. I was very, very skeptical before buying it, but let me tell you, it does feel indeed like paper and it also protects your iPad if you drop it or scratch it. Moving on to portability, here's where the iPad definitely wins. If you are a high school or university student, chances are you most likely have multiple classes in different subjects throughout your day. I mean, in a normal year, but you know. If you want to be organized, you would have some organization system that works best for you, consisting of either different notebooks for all your classes, a binder with dividers separating each subject, or simply lots and lots of paper. This is okay if you're doing online school, and it is indeed a pretty great organization system. However, if you're back to in-person classes, having so much stuff in your backpack and having the need to carry it around everywhere might become a burden. The iPad is the same as one single notebook, but carries all the information you need from all of your notebooks. It is also pretty light and doesn't occupy much space in your bag. In this part of the video, I want to talk about editing your notes. For example, erasing or adding some stuff within your already written notes. Again, iPads have a major advantage here. With only one tap on the menu bar of your application of choice, you can move things around, you can erase whole lines of text, you can change the color of your text, or you can move things around. This is extremely convenient and doesn't take much time at all, so you can do all these things during the actual lecture and have perfectly aesthetically pleasing notes without having the need to rewrite them later on in your day. It is so much harder and inconvenient to erase things when you take your notes on paper. It highly depends on the paper type and your writing instrument. For example, pencil is so much easier to erase than highlighters or even than pens. This criteria highly depends on you 
whether you are an organized person or not, and your own personal preference. When talking about iPad note-taking, it is extremely easy to organize your notes. You just create folders within your app of choice with one single tap. You can create notebooks within these folders and all of your files and notes go in there for you to access them at any given time. Note storage is also automatic on the iPad. You can sync your notes on iCloud so you can have access um, to them on any of your devices like your phone when you're on the go or your laptop when you feel the need. Uh, of a bigger screen to visualize your notes. On the other hand, keeping track and storing paper and notebooks can become problematic over time. Even if you choose to scan your notebooks and access them digitally, then getting rid of the actual notebook, this can be extremely time consuming and errors can follow very, very easily if you just forget to scan one single page. Trying to find a particular piece of information within a specific notebook takes ages, it simply becomes a nightmare. However, on an iPad you can very easily use the search function built in the app you use, which recognizes even cursive handwriting and can find what you are looking for in a matter of seconds. It would not be fair to make this video and not talk about the cost of both options. The cost of using paper, while possibly expensive if you choose to use fancy pens and notebooks, is still most definitely cost efficient. So if money is a big concern, then I would say that paper is a no-brainer. There is a large gap between the price of an iPad and the price of a notebook and some pens. If you also want a device for more purposes like drawing, researching, entertainment purposes like watching Netflix or YouTube, an iPad could replace your laptop, so you could think of it as an investment. You can find cheaper options for the iPad too, especially if you go for the base model iPad 8 or something on those lines and you also benefit from student discounts at the Apple Store. In this last section of the video, I want to briefly touch on some more stuff that you can bear in mind when making your decision. Some other advantages of using an iPad would then be the following. It is super easy to share your notes with your colleagues or your teachers. This is especially helpful when it comes to submitting your homework or your practice problems. You can forget about scanning anything. You can also add diagrams or pictures from the internet on your notes, which helps a lot if you are a visual learner. The app Notability also has an audio recording function, so you can have a recording of the lecture alongside your notes and you can actually view in real time what the teacher was saying when you were writing down something very specific. You can also annotate articles, textbooks or powerpoints on the iPad, which completely eliminates the need of expensive textbooks and makes it easier for you to have everything related to a specific subject in a single folder. Some disadvantages, however, of the iPad might also be some of the following. Not all teachers might permit the use of an iPad during their class or lecture. I had never had this problem at university, but if I were to use this approach in high school, some teachers would have definitely called me out and asked me to use pen and paper. iPads also have a battery life, so you always need to make sure that your device is charged before the start of a lecture, and you might also need to keep a charger in your bag at all times, just in case it ever runs out of battery. There are also some additional advantages to using pen and paper, uh, some of which would be there are no notifications, social media apps, or any type of distractions when you write on paper. Of course, you can decide not to download social media apps on your iPad, but you will still have the internet at your fingertips. Taking notes on paper completely eliminates this problem. There are also some studies that say that even compared to handwriting on an iPad, people retain information better and more efficiently when writing uh, things down. So if you are the kind of person that bases off their learning process on their capability to retain loads of information during the actual lecture, you should consider this as well. Another disadvantage that um, I can think of of using paper is the fact that paper always runs out. You can go through so many pens, highlighters and notebooks throughout your school year, which makes it hard for you to organize stuff well, and you always need to have a refill on your hands. 
So yeah, those were the things that I wanted to discuss regarding this battle between iPad and paper note-taking. You need to make the decision based off on your personal preference and see which advantages of one method outweigh the disadvantages of the other method. As for my personal case, I came up with the following system. Uh, several lectures and problem sheets, which are basically practice problems that we need to submit by a given deadline, I am using my iPad, while for tutorials, which are basically one-on-one -on -one teaching classes, I'm using a refill pad and take paper notes, since these classes are extremely fast-paced and don't have a clear structure to them. For my exam preparation, I am going to use paper because we are having in-person exams this year, which means that I am not allowed to bring my iPad into the exam hall, so I'm just gonna keep doing them on paper and uh, store them in a binder. So I'm just going to do all of my practice problems and practice papers on paper so I can get used to the style of the actual exam. Alright, so this brings me to the end of this video. I really, really hope that you found it useful and that it helps you make a decision for this year or maybe the upcoming school year or the upcoming term or whatever you fancy really. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more university, maths and study related content. Follow me on Instagram for more content if you feel like it. And yeah, have a wonderful day and I really, really hope to see you soon for another video. Goodbye! I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want the feeling of you in my bed I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline, want you by my head